Welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to cover the last two game modes that come with Flash Duel. The first one is called Raid on Death Strike Dragon, and in this mode, two to four players are going to team up and go against one player who is playing as the dragon. Now, for the dragon to win, the dragon has to land a hit on each of the opponents to remove them from the game. For the mortals to win, they have to hit the dragon a certain number of times. Now, the number of times they have to hit the dragon, as well as how many cards start in the draw deck, as well as how many ability cards the dragon gets, and the dragon's opening hand, all that is determined by the number of opponents that the dragon is facing. So, in this case, I'm just going to assume we have two players teaming up against the dragon. And in that situation, you would use all 50 of the numbered cards that come in the game. Those become your draw pile. As well, you'll get an opening hand of seven cards if you're the dragon, and you'll have two hit points. That means that the opponents have to land two successful hits, not at the same time, but at any point during the game, over the course of that game, they have to accumulate two hits against the dragon to defeat it. As well, the dragon gets to collect four of the eight ability cards that are provided. Now, you'll see these ability cards, they look bigger, because they are bigger. <laughs> this is the uh, regular sized ability cards. The dragon's cards are bigger, his piece is bigger, everything about the dragon's bigger. Is it better? Well, you can decide that. I'm going to show you four of the ability cards that you could potentially use in a game if you were the dragon. Okay, so first up we have Perfect Counter. When a mortal plays an ability, counter that ability. You remember in the last game when we played the team battle mode, Andrea played an unblockable six. It was an ability card she had. So if you were the dragon, you could play this and just simply counter that ability from happening. Keep in mind you can only play, even as the dragon, one ability card per turn, although you can also play one ability card per opponent's turn if the trigger goes off during the opponent's turn. Next up is Bone Crusher. At the start of your turn, mortals on dark spaces discard two cards. This is a great ability to play when you know you're going to be doing an attack and you want to limit the chances that your opponents will have to block. And here's Tempest. This triggers when you get hit but aren't yet defeated. You can choose a mortal and all other mortals teleport to their start space. So think about this, you've just been hit and you're worried that the next player is going to be able to hit you? No problem, push them all the way back to the start space and hopefully out of range. And finally, and certainly one of my favorites, Deep Breath. Instead of your turn's main action, you can attack this turn as if you played a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 all at once. Now what this means is anyone within 5 spaces of you has been hit with the number of the space that they're on. So if someone was three spaces from you, they're going to have to block against a three. If someone else is also five spaces away from you, they're going to have to block with a five. This is like a dragon's breath, just sweeping several spaces at once. It's a great way to attack several opponents who are getting close to you. When playing Raid on Death Strike Dragon, the mortals always go first, and whatever turn order they establish at the beginning, that's what they have to maintain throughout the rest of the game. So if yellow went first and then green, whenever the mortal turn came around again, yellow would have to go first and then green would go. Another key difference is that at the end of a mortal's turn, he or she does not collect up to the full hand of five cards. They wait until all of the mortals have gone, and then they all drop to five cards at the same time. Then it goes to the dragon's turn, the dragon takes its turn, and then it draws up to its full hand. And then it goes back to the mortals again. Also, once a mortal has been defeated and is removed from the game, the dragon is overcome with confidence and gets to take an extra turn after his or her normal turn. Keep in mind too, when the dragon is recovering, he still can block or retreat, but when his turn comes around, he has to recover, so he can only refill his hand up to the full card size that he's allowed, depending on the number of players. And just like in team battle mode, the mortals have access to the dashing block move, so if yellow was being attacked by the dragon with several fours and didn't have enough, green could dash up here and contribute some of his or her fours to help block. And if that wasn't enough and you had another mortal playing as well during that same turn, this mortal could dash up and contribute his or her fours and hopefully block that attack. And that's Raid on Death Strike Dragon, but don't forget there's one other mode and it's called Betrayal at Raid on Death Strike Dragon. And the biggest difference with that mode is you use these cards. These are the loyalty cards 
and they either have on them Loyal Mortal or Traitor. So what you do at the beginning of the game when you're setting up is you shuffle these up and you deal one to each of the players, even the dragon. Now keep in mind in this mode, you have to have five players. So everyone gets a card. If the dragon gets the traitor card, then there won't be a traitor being played by one of the mortals. However, that card still has value. At any time during the game, before the dragon has been defeated, the dragon can trade in that traitor card and then collect an additional hit point. So now the mortals will have to hit the dragon one more time than they thought. Up to that point, they don't know. The mortals won't know whether or not there is a traitor amongst them. So that's kind of nice. The longer you can hold using that up, it keeps them in doubt. Of course, the odds are better that one of the mortals is actually going to be a traitor. Now, if you're a loyal mortal, you will not want to show your loyalty card. And you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on your other mortals because if one of them seems to be playing poorly and not really helping out the team, well, they might be a traitor or a really bad player, <laughs> or they just have bad cards. Now, as a loyal mortal, if you think that somebody is the traitor, you can accuse them. Once you've accused that person of being a traitor, they have to show you, have to show everyone, their loyalty card. Now, if they're the traitor, they're instantly defeated and they're out of the game. But if they happen to be another loyal mortal, then you as the accuser, you are defeated and are removed from the game. Now, if you're the traitor, you have a special ability where you can reveal your traitor card at any time. Even if you're being attacked by the dragon or dashing strike by the dragon, because keep in mind, the dragon won't know which of the mortals is a traitor and actually helping him or her out. Once you've revealed yourself as the traitor, you get another special ability. You can now point to one of the other loyal mortals and say, I know what cards are in your hand. You're holding two fives, two threes, and a four. And if you're right, that mortal is instantly defeated. And then you can go ahead and guess, or maybe you know, the cards in one of the other mortal's hands. And if you're right again, that mortal is defeated. Now, you may choose to not try to guess the cards because maybe you just you know you don't know. I mean, you may as well always guess, I suppose. But if you choose not to guess or if you simply get it wrong, there's no penalty to you. What happens then is you go over to the dragon start tile right away and now you'll be teaming up with the dragon. You'll now be actively working with him as if you were using the team battle mode rules. And that's how the rest of the game will play out. Now, <laughs> you might be wondering, how could I ever possibly know what the cards are that the other people are carrying that are on my team when I was pretending to be one of the loyal mortals? Keep in mind, uh, when you're working together in a team, you can look at each other's cards, you can share that information if you want. So you may actually know a lot of the cards in your friend's hands, your former friend's hands. <laughs> um, or you might not know any of them because certainly one of the strategies might be to not share information with your other mortals just in case one of them turns out to be the traitor. In fact, there's a really interesting bit of strategy in the rule book. Let me just grab it and read it to you right now. So there's a little strategy section here where it tries to give you an idea of how being a traitor really works. Now you wanna play poorly because you don't really wanna help out your teammates too much but you don't want to play so poorly that they catch on to you. Now, if anyone suspects you're playing suspiciously bad and asks to see your hand, you can make people think that that person is the traitor instead of you. Just remind everyone that it's a real traitor move to trick people into revealing their hand. Or you can go the other way and say that someone else is playing intentionally poor and that they should show their hand to prove their play made sense. If they do, just reveal yourself as the traitor and then name all their cards. Oh man, evil stuff, I love it. <laughs> so that's the final mode that comes in this game. It comes with a whole bunch of modes, a whole bunch of cards, certainly lots of different ways to play the game. So to wrap up our series on Flash Duel, I'd like to play through Raid on Death Strike Dragon. So when we come back, I'm gonna be playing the Evil dragon. You know, who's to say the dragon is really evil? It's just in my nature to eat people and burn down villages. It's those evil mortals trying to stop me from doing what nature intended. So the evil mortals will be played by Luke and Andrea. So I'm going to take a look at my ability cards, make sure I have a good strategy, and then I'm going to come back and win. Rawr!
All right, we're ready to begin. I'm joined with Luke Smith and Andrea. <coughs> Dad's been Oof. setting off the fire alarm all night. Yeah, sorry about that. I gotta be more careful. I'm gonna burn the house down. <laughs> That'll be the end of and watch all of our games. <laughs> and all the, oh no! No. All right, so we're ready to start with raid on Dragon Strike, Death Strike. What's this called? Dragon Strike. Death Strike Dragon. Death Strike. I knew that. Raid on Death Strike Dragon, of course. <laughs> All right, so the mortals are going first. I'm going to be going first out of the two of us. And I'm going to be moving <coughs> two spaces. Okay, so Luke, you're next. I'm going to be moving three spaces. Okay. So now after they've both taken their turn, they have to draw. So Andrew will be drawing one card and Luke will be drawing one card. And I'm going to be playing my turn now. All right, so during the break there, Mr. Grabby Fingers was taking everything in front of him, the draw pile, the discard pile. So we're just going to move these so he doesn't get confused. Put in front of Mrs. Grabby Fingers. Hopefully she won't be taking hey. any of them. And I'm going to make my move, and I am going to play a four and move forward four spaces. One, two, three, four. And now the kids need to talk over what they're going to do next. Okay, so for my turn, I'm going to be moving four spaces. Okay, and Luke, what are you doing for your I'm turn? I'm going to do a dashing strike on you. Oh, really? The first blow attempting to be made? Yep. How? I'm going to use a five to move. Dashing forward with five, yep. and then? And then another five. To strike. Yes. All right, so... Well, I will play a five to block. Like so. So now you guys have to draw your cards. So Andrew, you'll be drawing one card, and Luke will be drawing two. And then it'll be my turn. Yeah. You know what I think you deserve? What? A dashing strike in return. Oh, I am no, gonna, I don't. I think you do. I'm going to dash forward three spaces. Nope. And then I am going to hit, strike you, with two twos. Bimbo block. <laughs> oh, nice. I don't know what a bimbo block is, but I don't like it. It's just a bamboo block. <laughs> oh, bamboo. bamboo. That makes a lot more you sense. Want a All right, so I have to drop the seven cards in my hand. So I'm gonna be drawing four cards, and these crazy kids are gonna have to think of what they're gonna do on their turn. Okay, so for my turn, I'm gonna be using my special ability, Charge Shot, which means I get to reveal a card from my hand. And you can push that opponent back on these spaces. And I'm revealing a one. Okay. I could counter that if I wanted to with my perfect counter. But I don't want to. Okay. I'm scared of other abilities she has. So what are you going to do? I'm going to attack you. Okay. And you're in a range of five, so I'm going to hit you with three fives. Ooh! Block it, Mr. Ooh, block it. Nasty. And you, you can't block retreat. That. You have to block it. I would, need, I would need three fives. And I do not have those three fives, so I am taking a hit. Now I have a dice here that has two on it to show my two hit points. I'm going to reduce that to one. I've taken one hit, but now I'm going to use my Tempest ability. You get hit but aren't yet defeated. Choose a mortal. All other mortals teleport to their start space. So I'm going to choose oh, no. Andrea and teleport Luke back. So what? Luke is being kicked oh. back. <laughs> I want. I thought you were choosing her, so no, I can stay. I'm pushing you all the way back. Because Dad teleported me back, I'm going to have to move. So I'm going to move four. Now I'm going to pick up my cards. While they're picking up their cards, I'm going to play on my next move. Yeah! All right. So for my turn, I am going to play a five to attack Andrea. What can you do about that? Block. Block with a five. Right. <laughs> okay, so that didn't go as well as I would have liked, but now I get to draw a card, and then it will go to Andrea's turn. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another ability called Smolding Embers. No, you are not. I am. I have only one life left. I can only imagine she's going to do something bad with her ability, so I'm going to play Perfect Counter to counter your ability. So that ability gets flipped over, but you don't get the effect of it. I'm awesome. sorry. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do? Okay, so now I'm going to do a dash and strike. I'm going to move three, and then hit down with two. Ooh. I am going to block with a two. 
All right, Luke, what are you doing for your turn? I'm going to be moving free. All right. And now you both get to draw your cards, and I have to decide what I'm going to do. Yeah. All right, so for my turn, I'm going to use my deep breath. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> More fire. And so this means now I've basically attacked <laughs> with all the different numbers, which means I'm hitting Andrea with a two and Luke with a four. So, Andrea, you need to find a two in your hand. I do have a two. Oh, right. So what about you, Luke? Do you have a four? I'm burned. You're burned up? Yes! <laughs> and don't forget, when a mortal has been mortally wounded, <laughs> it is removed from the game and the dragon gets an additional turn after their normal turn. So I have to drop a card from my hand because I was down a card from the last turn. And now I get to go again. And at the start of my new turn, I'm going to play the Bone Crusher ability. This is the last of my abilities that I have available. Immortals on Dark Spaces discard two cards. So you have to discard two of your cards. Okay, so I'm going to discard my two cards. And I am going to attack with a two. You just won. I can't attack. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I can't block with anything. Phew! I thought I was, I don't know, I was on the edge there. I wasn't sure. Because if you had had a two to block with, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I thought I was in trouble. Okay, well listen, I won. I don't mind that at all. The good dragon has defeated the evil mortars and can, <laughs> mortars, mortars. mortals and can go on <laughs> pillaging villages as he should and eating innocent <laughs> citizens. Well listen, I hope you enjoyed seeing how this mode of Flash Duel is played. I hope you've enjoyed the whole series. And I really appreciate you guys watching and, of course, leaving your comments. We're going to have a new video up soon that's going to announce the next game we're going to be playing. So I hope you tune in for that. Until then, it's been Rodney and the kids. We'll see you later.